Hello, welcome back to the Geography 300 Geographical Data Analysis video series at WVU. The previous set of lectures introduced regression with bivariate linear regression. This is the second of three weeks of lectures or videos on regression. As you can see behind me, we are first here in this next week, this set of videos, looking at one of really many ways, but one, you could say two ways, they're related to each other, to address the particularly the assumption of independence of the data. And as we have said, as we have seen, the fact that our data is spatially autocorrelated means we can't really say it's independent. So what do we do about that? This is one way of doing it, spatial regression. Now, uh, what I will do here is an overview of part of the process for spatial regression. Now, it typically starts with what we saw last week, with ordinary least squares. So we do our ordinary least squares. Then the next step, and one way we can check to see if spatial autocorrelation of the data is an influencing factor in our data, is to take a look at those residuals. This, in fact, is why ArcGIS has as its default, when you run OLS regression, it defaults the display to showing you the residuals so that you can take a look at the spatial pattern of them. And in particular, and there's the warning that you may have noticed, to say you should run Moran's Eye, spatial autocorrelation of the residuals. This is common as a next step. then it's okay, what do we do with that result? We get our p-value, we can get and say, okay, the residuals, they, do, they display spatial autocorrelation, but they don't. If they don't, we can say we're done. That doesn't guarantee that spatial factors have not been a problem. But it's a good way of checking, and in many cases, we can then say, okay, it's good enough. But what do we do if there are errors, if there is spatial autocorrelation within our residuals? This then leads to a few different ideas, a few different techniques. I am pulling out three of them for this course. Two of them we'll look at this week. One of them will come up next week. But in this introduction, I will d introduce all three to say and get into an introdu introducing why or how we might decide among them. And it's a question of going back to what we know elsewhere about the project, about what we are studying. Again, this doesn't, these analyses don't happen in a vacuum. We have background knowledge to bring to bear. And in this case, that background knowledge, we use it to answer the question of why do we think there are, is autocorrelation among the residuals?
the first reason we could hypothesize as to why our residuals have autocorrelation is to say, well, okay, maybe, maybe there's something else going on, something that we haven't accounted for in our data. So um, to, to take an example, we might be looking at, um, okay, say the percent of, to take current events again, the percent of people who are wearing masks with the COVID infection rate. A missing factor would mean that there's something in addition to mass compliance that is affecting the COVID rate. So we might say, okay, we don't have data about the vaccination uh, level. So we can say, okay, we have something missing. We haven't accounted for everything within our data. If this is the case, we can use something called spatial error regression. Okay, that's if we have missing data. The next would be, what if we suspect that space is directly related? So specifically through the COVID rate. And that's what's in the dependent variable. So our dependent variable here, as a reminder, is the COVID infection rate. Our independent variable is the percent um, of compliance with the masks. So if we think there is spatial dependence directly within the dependent variable, so a county with a high COVID infection rate, its neighbors we suspect also should have a high COVID infection rate no matter what they are doing with their masks. Then we will go with something called spatial lag regression. So here we might say, okay, COVID is it's an infectious disease, so it's going to cross the county lines as people cross the county lines. So we will go with spatial lag regression. So we can see here, there can be arguments made for multiple approaches here. It may well be the case that you do multiple approaches. These are the two that we'll be looking at this week, spatial lag and spatial error regression. The third one, which is the most complex one, and that's why it's presented last, is something called um, geographically weighted regression, 
And that's what happens if we think the relationship itself is not consistent across space. So, or in other words, that the coefficient within our regression model is going to vary from place to place, rather than assuming it is one solid coefficient throughout the entire state or the entire study area. Now, this one is perhaps a bit harder to place into the COVID and mask example. It's hard to imagine this, but I'll put it down. So this is doubtful, this is pulling at straws, but maybe you could argue that a mask would be more effective against some variants than others. There's no reason to think that, no reason to, specific, to expect this, but maybe, maybe there would be something there. But for some reason, this kind of inconsistency would imply the, that masks are more effective in some places than others. Honestly, perhaps a more likely hypothesis for how this could arise, depending on how you're collecting the compliance data, if you are um, doing it through a survey, it would not surprise me if people are more likely to lie about their compliance in some places than others. That perhaps people in more conservative areas are more willing to admit that they are not wearing a mask because they think COVID is a hoax. Whereas people in more um, liberal areas, they might, some of them might still not be wearing a mask, but they don't want to admit to it. So maybe it's really about truthfulness in, within the data rather than the process itself. Again, just to guess as to how this might occur. So here, geographically weighted regression is what would be used in this situation where we suspect that the relationship itself or the coefficient is inconsistent from one part of our study area to another. So we have this process introducing the idea of, of excuse me, of spatial regression. It starts out with regular regression and we look at the spatial autocorrelation of the residuals. From that, we can decide which path to take based upon how we think the residuals became spatially autocorrelated. What do we suspect or know about the process or processes involved? If we think there's missing data, we can go with the spatial error regression. If we think that the data has dependence spatially, within the dependent variable or spillover from one place to another, that would be spatial lag regression. And if we think the relationship itself is inconsistent, again, across space, then we can go with geographically weighted regression. So those are the three types of spatial regression. 
as I said earlier, we'll be looking at spatial error and spatial lag regression in this week's set of videos. As always, if you have questions, please feel free to ask during the Zoom class and, um, or send me an email. So uh, thank you for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you at the next video.